Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing how I use different software products to edit my photos. Looking for fun, creative, interesting, different. Just finding ways to use the products to get the photo uh, at the end that I in, kind of envisioned, right? So just sort of following my creative um, tune, if you will. Um, so today I'm in Luminar 4 and I've got a photo here. And let me just show it to you. Here's the photo. As you can see on the right, I've got lots of layers and lots of masking going on. I'm going to walk through all of that. But there's my starting photo and here's my final photo, bringing to life this sunset, making a lot of different changes. And this edit is all about masking um, and layers and using some looks and tools and that sort of thing, just basically targeting areas of the photo and crafting the image to look exactly how you want it to look. I'm going to hit reset. I'm going to get rid of all that stuff on that right hand side, start over, and we're going to hit it right now. Okay, here we go. We are on the base layer, unedited photo before and after, no changes. I'm going to start on the light tool. I've got some smart contrast of about 28 or 20 so, something like that. Uh, highlights I bring down pretty significantly, like a negative 75. Let's call it 75. And I'm bumping up the shadows a little bit, about 34. So this for me, uh, as every base layer really is, when I know I'm going to use layers and stack layer upon layer, the base layer for me is getting the light kind of balanced a little bit. So I went from that to that. Okay, so I'm finished with that basic stuff. Now I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And in this case, I'm going to go get a look. And I'm going to pop down here into, I've got a user look folder, the looks that I've been building. And this is called Sunset 2. And I'm going to apply that. And you can see it's pretty much a, uh, uh, I don't want to say an eyesore, but it's got a lot of color in it. So this is where I'm going to use a luminosity mask to add it to the, um, to the photo. So that's basically going to use a mask that's built on light values, luminosity, and basically the colors are going to be applied more heavily in the brighter areas, which is going to be the sky and the water, and there you go, and less heavily in the um, in the middle, right, which is kind of the darker parts. So a luminosity mask looks like that, and so where it's more red, you're getting more of the effect, and where it's less red, you're getting less of the effect. So I like that. I think it looks really good. However, um, I want a little bit more. So to me, the luminosity mask, um, it went a little too far, if you will. And so there's a way you can get a little bit more out of it without um, having to kind of go in there and try to move the sliders. And all you can do is you can just click on here and you can say duplicate layer. And what that's going to do, it's going to take that adjustment layer one that has that preset or look on it with the luminosity mask. It's going to create an exact copy. And now I've got a much more intense look. However, it's too intense, so I'm going to back that to about 60. And so what I wanted was a little bit more of a kick out of it, but I didn't want to go all the way like two times. And so duplicate a layer, reduce the adjustment amount, and now I've got the luminosity mask, you know, which is a subtle implementation with a little bit of a kick on it. You can play with that. Every photo is going to be different, but that's an idea to use when you want to get a little bit something more out of it. Just duplicate the layer, change the adjustment amount, and you'll get a little bit more out of it that way. Okay, I've got that looking good. Now I want to focus on that section of building, so I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. I'm going to go into Looks, and there's a, a pack called Street Edge, and I have to be honest, I don't really know where I got it. Maybe it came with Luminar, maybe it was some free pack they gave away, but anyway, it's called Street Edge. Um, and in that, there's a preset or look called Street Cool. I'm going to click on that and apply it. Now, it's currently applying globally, which I don't really care for, so I'm going to come in and fix that. But first, I want to actually change some of the, the preset. First thing I'm going to do is take the temperature, uh, about 20, uh, something about like that, and I'm going to take structure to about 40. Now, keep in mind, this preset is currently applying globally meaning across the entire photo, but mentally and of course visually all I'm thinking about is that stretch of buildings. I just really want to isolate that and I liked the way this look looked, um, but I wanted to make a couple of changes to it. So I did that. So now I'm going to go back to this layer and I'm going to say a luminosity mask because again, just like on the previous two layers, I'm isolating this section. Now on the previous ones, I isolated really the sky and the, uh, the water, not entirely isolated, but it gets a heavier effect there. This time I'm doing the opposite, so I'm gonna have to invert that mask. Okay, so there's my luminosity mask. If I click on brush and then highlight it, you can see it. But again, I want it opposite, so I'm gonna say invert, 
and it swaps it like that. So now you can see my luminosity mask is applying more heavily in the dark areas, as you can see there, and less heavily in the brighter areas. However, I'm not done. I'm gonna hit the X key, and that switches between paint and erase. And what I wanna do is come in here, and I'm just gonna erase the luminosity mask from the sky and water. So I'm gonna delete this part of the video as I walk through that because it's gonna be a waste of your time watching me do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and erase the luminosity mask from the areas where I don't want it to show so that I'll just have it applied to the buildings. Okay, so that was a fair bit amount of work, but there you go. Now you may be asking, hey Jim, why didn't you just brush mask it into that area? And the truth is um, my initial intention was to use the luminosity mask and just leave it across the entire photo after I inverted it. However, I didn't really like, even with the inversion and the reduced impact on the sky and water, I didn't really like that. And so I ended up just erasing it uh, from there entirely. The flip side is you could just come in with a brush mask on this layer and just brush it into these areas. Um, now it would be a little bit different because this is a luminosity mask. So you can see here, it's not entirely 100% masked uh, into some of those areas, but uh, that is an option. And someone's probably gonna mention that and say, just brush mask it in, it seems easier. Uh, in this case it would have been, but my intention initially was to leave the luminosity mask the way it was. The other thing I also wanted to show was, I thought this was a good example of how you can use a luminosity mask and then actually erase parts of it where you may not want that in, uh, effect to be applied. So kind of a lesson there for lack of a better word, but the point is I have now isolated that section of buildings and um, added the preset with the customizations to it and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Okay, the next step is of course another layer. So I'm gonna say add new adjustment layer. I'm gonna get a mask and this time I'm gonna use a gradient mask. And what I'm gonna do now is focus on the water. So I'm gonna take my gradient, I'm gonna drag it like that. And I've been doing more and more videos with masking. I'm getting a lot of feedback on those. So I'm hoping that these are helpful. So um, I use masks a lot in my workflow. And so I just thought, hey, I might as well just keep at it. So I'm gonna do something about like that. If you wanna see what the mask looks like, I've basically covered the water and I'm in good shape. Now I can go in here and do the edits that I wanna make. And these edits will apply, of course, to that mask, which is the water. So let me look at it. I'm gonna first take the temperature down. So I got about a negative 20 or 21 there. Something about like that, and a little bit of a bump in tint to about 10. Next I'm gonna go to a, a AI structure, and here I'm gonna do like a negative 70. So I really like to smooth out water. And this was like a six second exposure, so it's, it's a little bit smooth anyway, but I always like to amplify that effect or that feeling just because I liked it with, uh, with running water. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like long exposures uh, so much. I'm gonna go to a color. Uh, vibrance is gonna go up a little bit. So, you know, maybe about 30. And then um, golden hour is gonna be about a 19. So let me do that. There you go, 18, 19. So I'm just working on the water, but you can see I smoothed it out and added a bit of a color boost to it. So let me turn that off and you can see now before, there you go, the water's, I don't know what this was, maybe there was something in the water or I'm not sure what, but it's kind of grainy there. Don't really like that. And I just wanted smoother water and a little bit more of a color bump and after much smoother definitely has the color bump uh, but now i got to go and focus on the sky so i'm going to say add new adjustment layer and this time i'm going to go ahead and just take a brush and i'm going to go ahead and brush in the sky because i'm going to hit x to get back right bracket key to make it bigger and now i'm just basically going to paint in the sky because these edits are going to apply only to the sky so once again i'm going to do this painting and then i'll cut to the uh, the end of that and start editing Okay, there you go. I spent a few minutes trying to get that, you know, decent, and there's my mask. So I'm going to say done, and now I'm going to get over here and do some adjustments, again, that are going to focus just on the sky. So I'm going to start with the light tool, and here I took the temperature down a little bit, so like a negative 16, and I'm going to bump the tint up about a 9. Next is AI structure, and once again, kind of going negative. That's just me just liking to accentuate that smooth, kind of uh, soft feeling, which I, I do all the time in sky and water. So that's what that does. I'm gonna give Vibrance a little bit of a bump, like a 14 or so. And then Golden Hour is about a 28. So similar kind of moves between the top and the bottom. That would be the sky and the water specifically, but not exactly the same. So I wanted to isolate them so that I could do them separately. But I feel like we're really just about there. Uh, all I've got left is one more layer. So I'm gonna say Add new adjustment layer. And here I'm just, this is kind of what I call touch up edits, right? So I'm gonna go into the light tool. I'm gonna give it a little bit of contrast, like a, you know, 18, 20, something like that. I'm gonna bump up the shadows just a little bit. 
uh, because I don't want to lose, uh, I don't want too much darkness in the, uh, in the city, uh, in the skyline itself. Uh, and then I'm actually going to go into the color and take the saturation down by about a 10 or so. It's, it's fairly colorful and I like it, but I don't want to kind of overdo it or oversell it. So pulling that back a little bit, still I think a, a impactful color photo. And that's really it. That's a combination of looks, gradient mask, luminosity mask, inverted luminosity mask, brush mask. I guess the only thing I didn't really use is a radial mask, but I used a lot of different things um, over a lot of different layers, including, don't forget the little um, duplicate layer trick, which I think is a nice little way to pop a photo. Um, but there's my final photo. My before photo was that, which I remember actually, and this is a number of years ago, but I remember being a really beautiful sunset. As you can kind of see, there's some nice color. Uh, and this is Nashville. I don't know if I said that at the beginning of the uh, video. But it's a beautiful city. It's a great view from up here on this uh, on this bridge. And that was my before, and that's my after. Very colorful and vibrant. And uh, you know, again, if it's too colorful for you or something, just you know, that final touch-up adjustment layer for me is kind of my um, kind of my reckoning, right? I'm like, okay, what did I overdo because I got a little overzealous? Like maybe the blue's a little too blue. So because I'm, this is a global adjustment, you can come in here and say, okay, blue, take that saturation down a little bit. You know, hey, Jim, that's, that's a little bit better, right? So those kind of things you can do. If there's too much pink, do the same thing, or overall, reduce saturation or vibrance. Or if there's too much detail, pull it down or whatever, right? So that's kind of why I leave a touch-up layer at the end, which is what this last adjustment layer was really for. But a bunch of layers, bunch of masking, some looks, some edits, uh, all that kind of stuff all comes together. The only thing I have left to do is I'm going to get the eraser and get these two little things that were in the river, get them out of there. But otherwise, I'm really happy with this photo. That's how I did it, my friend. So I hope this gives you some workflow ideas to implement in your own photos. None of this is, you know, hey, you got to do this or whatever. These are just suggestions and ideas that you can tailor to your own needs on your own specific photos and hopefully uh, get some mileage out of it. So thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again really soon and adios.